Hello good people, I'm Dmitry and today we're talking about my four easy cable management tips so you can have your system nice and cool because remember, having good cable management not only will make your system look better for when the ladies come over or the gentlemen but you also have a cooler system because there's no interference on the interior with airflow and uh, it also allows for easier upgrades down the line if you have to replace a drive or if you have to swap out some cables having things organized will make your life easier down the road. Uh... Now I'm no master, but I've done my fair share of systems. So I apply the same techniques over and over and they seem to work well for me. And they're not like the pristine kind where each cable is individually has its own channel, but this is primarily for to make sure that the interior is looking fine and the back panel can close without any force. Fred is coming along for the entire ride. So let's begin right after this. Hi, I'm looking for a case. Well, look no further. I got this beauty. The H700i by NZXT. With all steel premium frame with a side of tempered glass to beautifully showcase any cooling adventure you might pursue and cable management system that you wish you had earlier. All this lit up with integrated RGB lighting and built-in fan control. The H700i. This one's for you. Oh, I'll take it. All right, so let's begin. By the way, if you have not seen our 15 tips on building a computer video, make sure to check it out over there. But first tip for cable management comes using your motherboard to conceal cables. This is something that I've been doing for a while, but now as motherboards get a little bit more complex in terms of their design and like they have a lot more things kind of on top of them, it actually helps with cable management. So you can normally do this with fan cables. You can wrap them around RAM slots, cooler mounting, the heat sink, and use the case cavities to hold excess cables, uh, normally for the fan cables. And you can route smaller cables below the larger ones to hide them and to also hold them. And some motherboard components can also be good to route cables around them to create this nice controlled path. This is super, and this is super beneficial for like all-in-one coolers that have a thousand cables spurring out from the pump area and you can easily route everything and not be kind of worried about where all those cables will go. Tip number two is to route all your case default cables first. And this simplifies your cable work afterwards. So you basically want to separate the USB versus the front IO cables and work on them individually. So the IO cables, because they are individual little tiny cables, it really helps when they're contained first. The USB 3.0, it's a super super thick cable, I hate it. And for it to stay flat at the bottom, you need to extend it a little bit uh, so that the cable can actually create that uh, nice uh, seamless bend. The audio cable can be channeled right across the bottom of the motherboard so it doesn't interfere with anything else and it can be slightly tucked away underneath the motherboard too. And this way everything is cleaned up and ready to go before the big cables come in. Now one little trick I do to compress all these front IO cables which are individual and very annoying, the lazy way is to just compress them with the slightly thicker cable. So I normally do it with a 24 pin cable. It saves you time and in the end, it looks just fine. But the slightly less lazy way is to simply just tuck them underneath a slightly thicker cable already before you populate all the other power supply cables. And this way, the thicker cables are on top, so the little ones are kind of uh, you know controlled and everything is already flat before you populate uh, other cables on top of it. And I have done exactly that with my fan cables for the AIO. So there are three fan cables coming underneath this bracket. And I think it's a really good way to just hide them. So nothing is overshadowing here. And uh, the little thicker cables for the, th the four pins are kind of underneath all the other thick stuff. And uh, yeah, are being secured with the Velcros. But normally you just have a standard uh, cable tie holding this entire uh, cable mess. Point number three are power supplies. And don't be afraid if you have non-modular power supplies because those are just as easy to route in terms of cables as modular units. Now for modular units, it's self-explanatory. You leave only the needed cables and this way you minimize the entire cable clutter. But for non-modular units, bunch up the cables you know you will not be using so there's less clutter when the cables actually exit. And this way it allows that concentration of unused cables to 
to be contained with the power supply. So once the power supply is inserted, it can look intimidating with so many cables to work on, but work on them one by one. First, I route my eight pin and I hug the side of the case and exit through the cutout at the top. Sometimes I leave the cable hugging the case throughout the, you know, once it's going up. But in this case, I decide to route it through the center just to see if I can break up uh, the cable clutter and actually make it look better. The 24 pin cable is next. It's the biggest cable. So you exit it through the grommet that's closest to the 24 pin connector. You plug that in and then pull back any unused length. So the interior is cleaner. And of course, the priority uh, for us is the interior. And on majority of cases, you have this bottom lip beside the power supply, which usually gives you like at least one or two fingers of clearance. So you can stuff anything unused in that cavity. And for the GPU cable, I don't mind that we have no opening in the bottom. So uh, sometimes you can route it from the power supply shroud, but it means that the cable is kind of sticking out from the GPU like this. Sometimes it looks good, but I actually prefer this whole side exit and you just kind of have to uh, make sure to tighten it at the back so the cable doesn't droop and doesn't reveal too much of it on the interior because priority is the cleanliness on the interior and you can stash away and hide things uh, behind the case. So. Something, something like this is what I would settle on. And now to tie the whole thing together, we need to secure those cables. So majority of cases arrive with at least a few zip ties, and these are awesome for larger cables, but you can also use standard metal strings to hold the smaller cables, and they're also reusable, so that's a benefit, uh, but of course they don't look as good as a zip tie. If your case has Velcro straps, that's even better because they are reusable, and I secure cables based on how they're routed, and if I have any zip tie points around. So my 24 pin cable is kind of this anchor behind the motherboard, so I secure and route many other cables underneath it, so they're held in place by the 24 pin cable. And I route the SATA power underneath it, and because it's flat, I just have to find the flat area around the case, so it's not going to be on an angle that will prevent the side panel from closing. And also the SATA data cable is very thin, so you can easily route that um, underneath any of the cables for it to be kind of secured evenly in that entire mess of, or not mess, but entire flock of cables. Now when using zip ties, sometimes you want to leave a little bit of area in case you want to pass maybe something else through it before actually fully securing it to the chassis. And so my entire approach is kind of having this big supporting 24 pin cable that holds everything in place because I secured a 24 pin cable at the bottom and at least at one point at the top before it exits onto the interior. But of course you can take some more time and route each cable individually and seeing like if you place them beside each other on how they fit within how much space you have on an enclosure, but majority of cases follow the structure that I've been using on this new Corsair 500D. So it will apply to basically any other modern case too. And one of the reasons why power supply shrouds are so popular is because they do half the job for you. Look at this. They cover up the entire cable exit from the power supply and all you have to worry about is the re-entry of cables into the interior. So what happens if your power supply shroud is a bit, a bit more exposed or you don't have one at all. So check it out the back. I've used the Velcro strap that uh, arrived with the power supply and I collected all the cables so that whole exit doesn't look you know, as uh, cluttered. And so then I can do my standard cable work around the back here. But the most important thing here, because that's the part that will be also visible, is to make sure that that stuff is under control too. Also, don't forget about the rubber grommets because you can see they're multi-layered part, allowing you to pass certain cables. And so don't forget to kind of cover up the little rubber pieces on where the cable exits so that we don't see what's behind the cable. Sometimes you can reveal a little bit too much. So just make sure that all the you know, all the rubber flaps are flat with the cable. Also, most of the time the power supply has a little gap above it, which is perfect for routing USB cables from my all-in-one cooler that I route from uh, the top. Or if you have an audio cable that you want to pass to, let's say, a cutout that's near this side of the case, you can use that little area to pass it so it doesn't have to occupy anything over there. Now with examples like these where we have so many additional IO cables because this case has a fan controller that needs power, that needs motherboard connector. So all these additional wires that can be really frustrating to like, you know, initially handle, especially even if you insert the power supply beforehand. So one thing to do is you can go step by step by isolating, make sure that you're routing just uh, the IO cables first, then your fan controller, then your audio and stuff like that. And if you really get frustrated, 
getting sleeving to kind of put it all into one and hide it will definitely simplify that entire tube of cables and make it look a lot more appealing. And while cases are getting bigger and we have more area to work with, more case manufacturers need to do what NZXT is doing in terms of creating these plastic channel guides so you can seamlessly, you know, route your cables this way and nothing is kind of like in the center. Everything has its own dedicated channel um, and I think that's brilliant. And so that's my approach to cable management. I know it's kind of, you know, simplified because I don't spend too much time on it, but I find that having that uh, anchor 24 pin cable holding all the cables underneath it means that if I have to swap out any hardware or replace the power supply, uh, it's the actual replacement process is simplified because only one cable has to be kind of, you know, unsecured and you take everything out. Now, you may be thinking that doing cable management in any modern enclosure right now is simple. And yes, you're right. So I have bought a $40 gaming case, which has terrible cable management and will go step by step on how to deal with some challenging spaces instead with both modular and non-modular power supplies for a system, so stay tuned for that. But I am no cable management guru, so let me know how you do your cable management in the comments below. Share your tips with the community. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Dimitri, and will cable management you in the next review. Totally did not mean for that to rhyme. All right, see you later.